Hi guys, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you MKO on Memoirs of a Trader podcast. But first and foremost, I'll need you all to help. Please support me and everything that we do um, by liking, subscribing, the usual guys. Hit your notifications, leave your comments on what you found interesting in the podcast. Everything that helps the engagement, the algorithm to push this content to more people would absolutely help me and help the company. So welcome to Memoirs of a Trader podcast. And so MKO, please introduce yourself to the audience. What's going on everyone? My name is MKO. That's what most people know me as. I'm a singer songwriter. I'm an art curator. And um, yeah, and I own a record label where I uh, sort of put my music on and we've just ventured into production where all the visuals that we create from my company it's all done in-house from the music videos which we put out the contents that we put out for clients that we occasionally um, provide influencers to work with them so everything that you see on my page visuals related is all done in-house fantastic so first and foremost what does mko stand for um, mko is my initials um, it's uh, my first name Madwabuchi Kingsley and my last name Opo. And where are you from? I'm from Nigeria. Nigeria is home. Um, and yeah, I'm excited for this. And currently <laughs> living where? I live in Dubai. So yeah, Dubai is, um, is my home at the minute. Um, I say that because... I'm is this always, home away from home? It's, a, it's a home away from home. But I sort of like find home everywhere I go. I love that. Um, because I'm always, always traveling, seeing the world, creating my, you know, showcasing what I stand for outside of the UAE. And wherever I find myself, I find myself in the midst of people that I could somehow, by extension, call family. So, yes. Dubai is my home, and so is most places that I travel to. And I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna vouch for what he just said in terms of his traveling. Now, you guys know this has probably been the longest stint that I have not taken a flight somewhere with my family or gone somewhere. Wow. We are very big travelers, but let me tell you, I have been MKO. We gotta, we gotta jump on a podcast. We've got this to do. Let's, we gotta meet up for a coffee. We got things to do, right? I'm in a plane somewhere. Where he's sending me a video here. He's sending me. A, this guy legit is a traveler as well. It is very difficult to get hold of you. So, so in regards to the traveling um, and the demand that you have globally, um, is the traveling exhausting? Um, it gets exhausting when you sort of have to go somewhere and then in 24 hours you're back right. somewhere else. Right. You know, I've had I had a week when I was pretty much in and out of Dubai, um, but is it exhausting? Nah, it's fun, yeah, man. It's I'm not gonna fun. lie, it's, it, it's, it, it's fun. So it gets exhausting because of the people who are, because of other people around you, right. because now you're always away, and then sometimes they have their own jobs as well that they couldn't leave to travel with you. So sometimes when I travel, I actually have like people who are really close to me, traveling with me so it doesn't seem like i've been away for for too how long. many people are your core travelers that come with you um so i have one of my best mate chidi uh, we occasionally travel together um and my my brother in recent times and recently i just i was in kigali and i got the youngest one to come out and he loved it <laughs> so um, he loved it because you'd find yourself in these places where, you know, when you look at your brother, you see that's my brother. But when you see how he's being treated, you know, in certain places and in certain rooms that he gets into, it's something to admire. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I sort of want them to see these things to sort of help shape their own journey as well. So yeah, my brother, my younger brother, my, like, my other brother, Chidi, my content creator. So depending on where I'm going, if I need extra support, then I'll take people with me. Otherwise, they can provide that on the ground. Nice, nice. But at least that gives you the comfort that you're not alone. Exactly. As well, because that's yeah. important. Yeah. So the reason I ask about is it exhausting is that um, for a lot of you guys, 
who are watching this may probably not know this about me, that when I was younger, I was a recording artist. So I did music for a living um, for a very, very long time. And then I made the conscious, conscious decision at the age of 25 to, to pack it all in. I'm not gonna get into the details of everything, but one of the things that I did not like about the music lifestyle was the traveling, going to, this is how I felt. So mm -hmm. they would send me, let's say Portugal, We'd get there for about 4 p.m. By 6 p.m. we're in the hotel. They say, okay, come come down. You've got to come for your sound check. I come down for sound check. All right, cool. We get ready. Here's your dinner. So I don't even really get to order anything. It yeah. just comes. 8 p.m. Yeah. I'm still in my hotel room eating. 10 p.m. Got to go back out. 11 p.m. Got to perform. By 2 p.m. I got to get. I got to pack up and get ready because I got to go back to the airport to then get on a plane. And I hated it. Right. I felt that I was not in control of my life. Mm -hmm. That. I did it. Everybody was like, wow, Priyash, you get to travel here. You get to go here. And ha, 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 nice, nice. But internally, I did not like it because right. I felt that I was controlled. And it was one of one of the reasons why when I stepped away, I felt that um, I needed to step away from my own mental sanity. Whereas now when I travel, it's at my accord. Um, I do things at my time, at my leisure. But I felt like during my music career, um, that I didn't have that freedom and luxury. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why I asked, is it exhausting? But you said, obviously, you, you love it, but obviously to a, a different different extent. Yeah, I think the reason I say that is because I can relate to what you're, what you're saying, because if you were signed to a label yes. and you work with a group of people who sort of have to dictate what you do, yes. then it's different. That's what it was. In my case, I get to... De decide where I want to go, who I want to work with, the organizations that I want to be associated with. And sometimes, in most cases, I find myself going back to the same places over and over again because I've built relationships on, in those places. So when I arrive, it doesn't seem like work yes. anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and I, so I can, see what I, see, I can see what you mean. I think I remembered one time I went to... Uh, um, Seychelles for, for, for a concert when you when we got there for sound check people weren't ready and they've given you a call you know a call time you showed up and people are still very disorganized I hate that part of the travel you know the uh, the traveling part of it however when I'm on the ground and I find myself in that environment instantly what I want to do is who do I connect with to make this time mm. this wait this wait time worth my time being there. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So, so some people just see it like I've been booked as a performer to be somewhere, but there are other layers to it as well that you could, you know, tap into to make the whole, you know, process sort of like slightly more um, streamlined or yes. stress-free, you know? So I think I've, that's the difference. If you have to take orders or get someone, you know, then, then, someone is telling you where you need to be then it yes. gets exhausting. Yes, I, I was yeah, told yeah, yeah. to go to photo shoots. I was told this is the time I need to go for the um, for the music videos yeah. and all sorts. I had to feature in music videos of artists <laughs> I didn't even know yeah, and yeah, 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 all yeah, sorts yeah. of stuff and that to be... And I, I was, yeah, I, I kept things that... Um, I did what I had to do yeah. because I was told to, yeah. right? And so, so you're an independent artist. I am indeed. Just to yep. touch on that a bit yes. here, the exhausting part now for me was when I had my nine to five. Mm. Because then I had that, I would then finish work, go for sh go f go to the studio sometimes, have a show at night, and then maybe have to attend a conference or a meeting in the morning at s some silly How did time. you cope? And how did that make you feel? Now, that's the exhausting part. Then how did I cope? I think I was working towards a goal. Mm. I sort of knew that there would come a time when I would have to give up my nine to five for my passion. But I made sure that I enjoyed the nine to five as much as I enjoyed what I'm passionate about, which is my being an artist or being a creative or just being someone who likes to connect with people. What was that crossover? When did you know it was time to drop the nine to five and then go pursue this full time? Every time. Every time I knew it was time for me to jump, 
but the fear of taking that leap is what held me back yes and even when i decided to make that conscious decision i still felt like it was the wrong time mm. do you get me because when i made that call i still felt like i should have done this about two years ago prior to when i made that decision so i always tell people the minute you feel that way like i've reached a point where i could you know do this full time it's sustainable to do it full time go for it and i had a as as also as an artist i was running art fusion right uh, as a you know as an art curator working with creatives etc we had this um, partnership with Nakheel and we had Art Fusion Night as a festival almost in the on the Palm in collaboration with Bragg. Right. Um, they got us on actually and there were billboards everywhere on the Palm of Art Fusion Night. We also had other sponsors who were on the point who worked with that initiative but it was just so exhausting having to run that and also be at work. Um, so it was time to make a decision. So, so you I were <laughs> earning, even though yeah. you had your nine to five yeah, job, yeah, you were yeah. still earning through everything. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And then, so it wasn't a case of you kept the job for like for financial security. It was a bit of that mm. because I, it would have been sustainable for me to quit when I was meant to, but then the fear of the unknown was what was holding me back. Yeah. You, I can you, I can I can absolutely hundred percent agree, right? Because and, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know that firsthand that um yeah. trying to invest in trade and having a nine to five job, the only reason I left eventually well there there are, there are there are two underlying reasons, but one of the reasons was I could financially support myself right. without the nine to five. So once I got to a stage where I was earning more mm -hmm. than my monthly take home, mm -hmm. for me that that was okay. So now I'm substituting one thing for the other. Exactly. And what it does now, it frees up a lot of hours for exactly. me to then to, to, to pursue this uh, uh, with more hunger exactly. to then enable to me. So I eventually got to that point yeah. where I'm like, this is it because I'm now earning more money going after my passion than, you know, having my nine to five. So now talk <laughs> to me about the freedom of coming away from a nine to five gives you if you found your passion in which you're earning from. Talk to me about, about that. What, talk about that freedom, that feeling. Yeah. The freedom of just being able to do what you want to do, be yourself, not have to conform, say, for example, in a corporate environment where you have to look a certain way, talk a certain way. Um, the freedom of being able to pick and choose what you want to do, who you want to work with. Um, and you'd realize that over the years, you've put your time into, you know, a business and you could see the growth for someone else but the same time effort you can apply that to yourself mm -hmm. the same format of looking for clients brands to sponsor you as an individual you know that you can when you're doing that you just feel this sense of uh, accomplishment knowing that i'm doing this for me mm. and if you get turned down you have other you know things which are coming up and there are other countries you're traveling to at your own time meeting people building this relationship and making money from there so there's a feeling that, of accomplishment that comes with knowing that if you earn that money you worked for it you earned you know you earned that money you don't have to wait like till the end of the month for example it's anytime it comes anytime you know it, it might be seasonal there are times when you get the pennies here and there but there are times when you get the big buck and you're like yeah i did that you know <laughs> <laughs> just to let the viewers know i'm not telling you to quit your nine to five you know but don't quit 100 percent. don't five. you have Look, to know the MKO right time and to move. said no. i'm gonna go for the freedom <laughs> <laughs> don't do that relax yeah you know just take a back seat exactly. and then um we'll look one of the things I always encourage people to do is to experiment, try different things, yeah. right? Um, it's very, very easy to do a nine to five to get trapped in that in that cycle, mm -hmm. right? Of waking up, going to work, being exhausted, dinner, television, bed, mm -hmm. and repeat, mm -hmm. right? But if you truly have a passion in something, make the time for it, go for it, yeah. yeah? And then you will see, when you do something you love, 
eventually the money comes. The money comes. And when the money comes, you're able to make decisions like, yeah. okay, do I cut down my hours? Am I making enough to quit my job, etc., etc. There's a lot of people in my industry that, um, or even do my do my trading course that that will do well initially the first two three months. It's the warm up season, I, I call it. That they do very well. Yeah. You know, the, 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 they've got the Superman cape on, and yes, I'm doing this. Yeah. And then so many of them just quit their job, and I'm like, whoa, what are you doing? Too soon. Too soon. Yeah. Too soon. Because you need that level of consistency. Yeah. Right. And if you remove that security blanket of a nine to five salary, that pressure, yeah, is going to hit you hard. Yeah. So that's why you've got to be in a position where you're constantly earning yeah. prior to you leaving. So I can 100%. Um, relate. Yeah. So now, I want to take it back to Nigeria. I want to take it back, right from the beginning. Yeah. What was it like living, growing up as young MKO in Nigeria, compared to how you live now? Um, I grew up rich. Oh, so sign me up. Yeah. So, yeah. You need to adopt anybody? No. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's. I I grew up rich. I grew up with. Thank you for admitting that uh, yeah. and, and saying that as well. A lot of people would, would never even admit that, you know. But I, I, I'm headed somewhere with this. Okay. The richness is the richness of family and the f- richness of love. You got caught out, right? <laughs> you got caught out. You all got caught out. So, um, Sign me up to that. Yes. it's <laughs> And till now, I still, you know, I still live by that uh, module in anything I do. And when I call you my friend and I say, you're my boy, I love you, I love hard. Or you're my girl, I love you, I love hard. Because that's how I was raised, with love around family. And then there is the, there is that resilience that comes with just being a Nigerian in a way. Because every day is a, is a reminder of either you need to get out of this struggle, yeah, or you have to there's always a competition around you where you just want to be better Mm. always so growing up love around family um passionate about anything i do and my father is a creative so in a way it's just um it's just how i've lived by until now it doesn't feel like i've left nigeria in a way the Mm. only difference is I've missed my I miss my family or I miss being around my family. So, so yeah. <laughs> so, do you feel that now that you have reached a level of success, that there are people back home in Nigeria that may envy you, possibly a little bit jealous of you, potentially to the point of underlying hatred towards you? Mm-hmm. So, do you feel that's there? And if so, how do you cope? Well, it's it's everywhere. It doesn't have to be in Nigeria because there are people. But the people you yeah, grew up with, they've they seen have, you. Yeah, they've they seen, have seen me. you. And they're thinking, ah, yeah. Oh, yeah. How comes he's up there? He's, uh, yeah, but the people. How was the most humble way to say this? I was fortunate to grow up with people who are equally doing great. Mm. So when I see when I'm in Nigeria, the same way perhaps it's difficult to get hold of me is the same way it's difficult to go get hold of you know certain people that i grew up with having said that there are some that you know are still getting by in a way so i wouldn't say i for, no I, I i don't have that in nigeria like jealousy per se but there are people who look at me like you're now part of a different social class so it's more or less like they feel like they don't fit into my lifestyle. So they anymore. act differently around you now. They they feel like I sometimes talk to them out of courtesy. Right. So it's like a privilege. It's like a I wouldn't say privilege, but they just feel like why am I if I call him, he's probably not gonna pick up. Or that's how they feel. So it's not envy. Mm. You know, mm, yeah. it's just. I'm not at that level, so why would he speak to me? It's how they perceive me. Right, right. Do you see what I mean? So what is your message to them? From my friends who know me, like my core friends, will still have that banter where they never have anything nice to say. 
<laughs> never have nothing nice. Never. You know, they're your, they're your core. Exactly. They're your core fans. Exactly. Like, I, make, I post a picture, they're like, you still have your chicken legs, idiot. Do you know? Do you know? I, 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 I also think this is a music thing. Because when I was in the music industry and I had my core friends, they were the worst friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they were the worst supporters. They, I would make an absolute classic song. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, I'm yeah, there yeah. bopping my head thinking this is the next best thing since Billie Jean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're there, yeah. they're there pulling faces and telling me it's rubbish. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> friends have got to be the worst. Yes. But 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 it's, it's just it's just how it is, right? It's true and honest. And it's just they're there for the, for the fun. And so... As I'm talking to you now, I already know who my best man would be. But I haven't spoken to him in two years. Oh. But we just know that that's my that's my brother. That's, that's, your that's guy. my you know. That's your guy. Yeah, that's my guy because we share history. But over time, you meet new people and they equally, you know, impact your life in such a positive way that you feel like if it wasn't for the fact that I have already, you probably would, you know, fit that that role. So, so <laughs> something we spoke about prior to to, to jumping on live was about friends mm. and. Um, I had said to you that over the the course of how my life has has changed and progressed, I have had to drop a lot of people out of my life, mm -hmm. either purposely or just unknowingly. They have just faded away in, in the distance, naturally because of because of growth or people that I have purposely dropped out of my life because they don't fit my ethos of morals of what I of how I see things etc and I'm not saying like you should always follow how I see things as in as in don't have a fixed mindset have a have a ha have an open mindset open a mind. growth mindset yeah. right and um, there are a lot of people that are fixated on certain topics um, like, like war religion taxes etc etc and me I want to have stimulating conversations with mm -hmm. interesting people mm -hmm. that's why we're on this course yeah right that. and then so I've had to drop a lot of people out of my life and what it's done, it's made me not only think clearer because I don't have the negativity around me, but I also thought it needed to happen mm -hmm. to get rid of the baggage. Because the more baggage I'm holding, the slower I can run. Mm -hmm. If I let go of some of the baggage, and I've only got a few bags, because mm -hmm. there's always going to be a few bags. 100%. Yeah? Yes. And I've got to have the backpack on. Yes. Yeah, then I can run. Yes. You know, and that's how I feel. So would, could can you relate to something of a similar sort? I can. So when I talk about the, um, the jealousy, perhaps a bit of hate, mm. not having that in Nigeria, um, maybe, yeah, maybe I just choose to ignore certain yeah, ones. Yeah. I get that more with friends or people that I've met along the way of this journey of becoming the MK or that everyone sees, mm. right? And that struggle is sometimes I just want to hang out with you guys without you having to make comments like, oh, you're now a big time player, you're now a big shot, or we have to fill out a form. They say these things like underlying jokes, but... You know, this is we know. Yeah. They say these things, but, but it's what they actually but it's thinking. What they think, yeah. You know, but you forget that as you grow as well, you get married, you have children. There are you have lesser times that mm. you can show up. Of course. So technically, we're no different. Yes. You just chose what success means to you. Mm. That is starting a family, having my children, acquiring this and that. I choose to keep pursuing my passion, which means it takes me away from certain times that I can show up for certain things. And these things, these um, sacrifices leads to resentment. Yes, yes. Do you know what I mean? Do you feel that people find it difficult to understand your journey? Like, um, why would he not show up? Or why would he not message me? Does he not remember that we played football together? Like, yeah. is it is it a little bit of of this that they just cannot understand or accept where you are and where you're heading? Um, they can understand. I, if you claim not to understand, that will be ignorant, mm. right? Because they can all see. They can all see. They can all see that I don't even have a life for myself. When I say I enjoy the travels and all all of that, I I chose to. Yes, yes. I chose to exactly. be adamant with you know about setting things and just embrace the, you know, the journey. Mm. So 
I don't think they don't see. They see, they know, but they just feel sometimes like they have to say something. You would even come across people who didn't know me that well, that when it comes to talk about me, they would call me out on first name basis <laughs> just to make it seem like, yeah, that was my boy week. Nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean like they call you by, but when I you know so I don't know you, did you I don't, did you, know, I don't you. know you like that yeah. I wouldn't say I don't know you but as but in as in on that level on that level that you try to portray yourself in public or how you try to talk about me in public but do you think like people that. do that because they want association with you because that comes with benefits um Always, mm. always, always. I and I've. I, Yo, MKO, and, are you going to this club? It's all right if I roll. Yeah, so you, you you have that, but I don't. But I'm I'm no longer that guy. I'm that guy who shows up to a club because I genuinely have to be there. Mm. Maybe it's a conscious business decision. So there's a reason. There's a reason. There's a reason. There's a reason. Whereas before, I could be in all these places because I have a single to promote or I have, I want to be friendly with the DJs so they can play my music. Mm. Where I'm at right now, you can choose not to play it, but music is not the ultimate bread and butter for me. Mm. Do you see what I mean? So you'd have people who want to be associated with me because of what I have access to. Right. And I lived that life because I met, I knew someone who basically the access I have was what shaped, you know, their journey, you know? And when I look at that journey today, I'm like, do you know what? I'm proud I contributed to that success because yes. when I do it, I do it wholeheartedly. But when I know there is a certain level of um, selfish interest, I sort of try to, you know, Move and I think it's that. different for yeah. someone who's who's a musician, someone who's into a lot of things like you. Because I think a lot of people, and I remember from my days, they would hang with you, they would mm. chill with you. Mm. And th this is the way I used to always say it. My music name was Strikey. Love people it. would, <laughs> yeah, so everybody would know Strikey, yeah. but they didn't know Priyash. Mm. Are, do you come to my family home and have dinner with my family? Mm. If you're around that table, okay, you're my people. Yeah. 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 But if you just know Strikey, you never met my family, never been to, never been to eat. Yeah. Then, then, you know. You have no idea the different perception people have of MKO when they eventually come to know me, hmm. the person. Explain to the audience what do you mean by that. <laughs> um. I'm a good-looking guy. <laughs> so when I... <laughs> so, comments, so, comments, what we say? So, out of 10? So, out of 10? What so, we say? <laughs> so there are certain... There are certain pictures you just post without even trying <laughs> and you just get hate. You you hated for it. Out. Like, he's just... So what you have is people's perception where it's like, he looks very obnoxious, very arrogant, not very friendly. Unapproachable is the classic unapproachable yes that's an interesting one i wouldn't say you're unapproachable <laughs> i'll say you're a you, i think you're approachable did you forget how we met like just we, you chilled. didn't even know yeah, anything like know. we just yeah. we just hit it off so yeah. well and that's what i love so sometimes and i don't show up expecting people to know mkl yeah yeah so i didn't, I didn't yeah we didn't, didn't talk even, because exactly. oh, mko is this and yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. No none idea. of that well, yeah and so I guess that organic connection is what is what builds friendship. That's what right? builds friendship. I love that. So I had my birthday recently outside of the UAE and I hosted like a strictly invite um, um, gathering. So one of the friends who came, who was, in, you know, said something like, um, I know you. I know you know the people, the who's and the who's. I was expecting them like as in like celebrities celebrity because they know i know those people in those environments uh. but i but some of the people who were in that room were even more important yeah. than celebrities because they are like the low-key people who just don't move 
you know, anyhow. But I've been able to connect with these people. Anyway, my I my response to that, she didn't expect it, was it wasn't a circus. It was my birthday. I wanted the people that when I leave, I can still chat to them and be like, you're my friend. You're yeah. my homie. So it's not a business so transaction. It's not a business transaction. Yeah. Do you, do, you, <laughs> do, you, do you see what I mean? It was so intimate. But then I, when I went for the after party, now that's public. Everyone who wishes to show up can show up. You can come say hi, leave, whatever. Do you know what I mean? So for me, everything I do, you have the moment when you are you can be MKO. Mm. But then I agree that you can't detach one from the other. But there are times you have to make that h- human decision. Like mm. at the end of the day, you're human of beings. Of course, of course. People need to see that. What you see on socials without a f- one-to-one interaction will always be a perception. Yes, but that, that's, that's what always. it's like, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's what it's like. So I want to speak about parents. Mm. What impact did your mother and father have on you being the man you are today? Um, compassion. Compassion. Yeah. Um, both of them, you know, have that. Um, I think some of the mistakes I've made in life is perhaps putting other people first. As in over family? Over, over me. Oh, for, over you. Over me, which is what my my dad, you know, would do. Like, just believing that someone else needs it more than more than you do, right? So I think I've been able to find a balance right. between, you know, um, being taken advantage of mm-hmm. and being able to just know when someone really needs something and it's not just someone coming to you. And so my parents, I would say compassion and uh, love and resilience. My dad is a creative. He does nothing. Even when he doesn't know how to do something, he would figure it out so just being able to think of unconventional ideas Mm -hmm. because if you look at me everything i do from being an art curator backstory seven years ago that you wouldn't go anywhere and find an event that has been taking place and there is art there is live art there is this without having to brag Art Fusion Night was the first platform to do what that. is Art Fusion Night? <laughs> so Art Fusion Night was a platform we created many years ago to showcase all forms of creative art, with fine art being the predominant focus. And as someone who was doing business development back in the day in my corporate days, I hate going for business networking events and corporate events and it's just too uptight. So I needed something that you could do that would be art, corporate, and social. And that's how we came up with Art Fusion Night. And as a creative who had limitations to showcase my creativity, I offered that platform to other creative and I will pay them from my own pocket. That's interesting because the the, the question I was going (laughs) to now ask was that if you're an artist, how do I get involved with Art Fusion Night? Mm -hmm. And if I was the general public interested in art, how do I come to an event? So, um, so yeah, just I hope I answered the question about my, 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 my yes, parents, yes, yes. right? So with Art, uh, with Art Fusion Night, it's literally www.artfusionnight.com and it's Art Fusion Night on Insta. So we have, you know, and you can just reach out to us and we would vet the creative and put them on. Now, again, just to touch on that, when we started, the concept was so it could be replicated so there are more platforms for creatives in the UAE to showcase. So over the years, there's been many of that. So it's no longer just about Art Fusion right now. And we've gone through like almost like a rebranding phase so that we can get the right corporate sponsors, the right corporate sponsorship, the right um, 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 people who genuinely show up to the event for for art so they can actually purchase art and support the creatives it's no longer about those who just want to be in a nice place and mm, put videos their, and, and videos and be like check me out mm. i'm here do you know what i mean so 
at the end of the day, as much as we are for the artists, we also have now set it up in such a way that it's fully operational from a team who is behind making sure the website is running properly, the arts are well, are being listed, every event, the promo codes are generated for people who want to support, artists are getting their commission, all of that stuff as well is a proper functional business now. Like, But still, with the goal of ensuring that creatives are getting the spotlight that they need and the right financial support that they need for every time that they showcase. A, a platform the, to showcase their work. Because at the yeah. end of the day, if you're, cre- if you're creative and you're passionate about something, you need to see yourself first as a talent and then see what you're showcasing as a business. Mm. That's, that's it. That's it. And big of you for, for doing that to, to help these people showcase their, their work. So where do you see Art Fusion in the next five years? Wow. <laughs> I might have to kill you if I tell you. (laughs) 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 No, I think um, it started with passion. It's still going with passion and every growth we celebrate as we speak we were you know having it during the youth connect summit in kigali which is an initiative of the president so like over the years we've partnered with dubai tourism davidoff we've done so much so where do i see it in five years it's still doing growing well. it's doing well so for someone <laughs> that, that looks to try and um start events wants brands to get involved how would you go about getting some sort of sponsorship or some sort of partnership with a brand to to the audience listening what will be their first steps in acquiring that the first step should be what is your event about and when you go into a sponsor what do you think they need so do you just approach them do you send them an email how does that kind of connection work do you have to know someone You don't have to know someone. You have to go out and network, meet people. Like my biggest sponsor I met at an event, Mm. right? So you, and in addition to that, what is the message? If you're, if I'm coming to you and say, give me a thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars, how do you justify that money? No one would just give it to you. So the question is, what do you think your sponsor wants, and what are the key language you should use? Another to get them to sponsor you. For example, there has to be an ROI for any money you put out. What what social platforms do you have? If you don't have any, what about you as an individual? Forget about this whole social media influencer thing. Are you influential? Mm-hmm. Do you see what I mean? And when you say influential, it's di- it, it, there's a difference. Like, you could know just 10 people, and those 10 people are people of value. 10 people that can be converted into 200 because they are a mouthpiece of what, of your message, of what you represent, right? And do you have a proof of concept that you could share with whoever is a sponsor you want to work with, mm. right? proof this is why sometimes you'd find people who use their own money to create something first of all or it's like a series you first of all create the pilot and then you use that to go look for investors like what a lot of people do with netflix right exactly so you gotta have to have some what are you taking with you yeah to present period like if you send it to the first guy is it good enough if you were put yourself in the position of who you're trying to approach and ask yourself is this good enough if would I you take would, it? Would, if yes. I were the guy with the money, I hear that. I hear yeah. that. I hear that. So, let's talk about let's let's talk more about money. So, in your career, in your music career, how do in this modern day and age, twenty twenty four, how do artists make money? This day, break it down for the people. How do artists make money? What are the streams? So obviously you have your A-list artist who makes a lot of money from streaming platforms. Streaming platforms. Right. So we hear that 
streaming platforms, if you are under a label, you will earn peanuts to pennies. Exactly. But if you're an independent artist, that could be quite a substantial amount of money. Exactly. Right. And which is true. So if you're on the label, because they are the ones investing their money, they have to make a chunk of that first before, you know, it trickles down. But there are various ways from um, merchandise sales and understanding you as well as the artist, you are a brand. Right. How do you sell your likeness for money? Mm. How do you sell your time? What places you show up? How do you convert it? to money right so as an artist you put out your content boom streaming platforms social media marketing you put all that make sure that it's being streamed with tiktok now if you're fortunate where a tiktok converts your music and it now becomes popular you're good because a lot of them just some of them like they dance to it and then it just goes pops, it goes viral, viral. And, you know? and you're done. And all of that sta started during the whole pandemic, obviously, like when you have the Don't Rush challenge that was happening during the pandemic where people are make doing like the makeup challenge in their homes and everything. Just by staying at home, those guys were earning money from, you know, Crazy from, from money streaming well. platforms. Yeah. And that just that track can set you set you up for life. Mm. So the question is, what are the what are the tool you have access to? And which is the easiest for you to use and if that's if you if you find that one try and you know maximize on it if TikTok is where you know you you're associated with perhaps an influencer get that person to put your a challenge out for you and then the streaming gives you money go out promote it show up to clubs get paid um, try and create genuine fan base how would you get a gig though because when you're you got to have to start with your own people first as an artist just because you are an artist does not mean you're very good mm. but if you're really really good your people at the early stages especially they would mess with you so you have to think of creative ways to bring them close have a listening party make it chargeable those who can afford it would pay right and those who can't try and see if they but i know have a you MKO, why am i gonna pay to now come to exactly your so those people now would those people now would have other people that they want to invite who would pay so you gotta have to be strategic about who you want to bring on yes right the venue as well you can earn commission from from the bar revenue because you're inviting all these people for free. They're getting visibility. They're getting real time people spending at the space at the space. At the end of the night, they give you a commission for whatever you spend. People are posting about people them. are posting mm -hmm. about them and mm -hmm. you know, they're getting all that. But you need to also be mindful because at the early stages, you gotta have to be willing to do a few things for free as well. Because a venue that is allowing you to use their space when they don't know if you can actually pull in the people, the crowd. So it's a risk for them as well. It's a risk for them. Mm. So you have to be willing to, you know, mm. to do, to find a good balance okay. and get someone to represent you if you can't represent yourself. It's just, it's just easier. Just don't try and do everything yourself. yourself. Right. You know, right, um, right, right. there are people who have major streamings, but they haven't really acquired the right platform to monetize, from, monetize it. from it, mm. you know, um, so that that would be my advice and i'm giving an, an advice based on what has worked for me you know as even you might say so successful so, but i'm so, still going so, so there's so much that you can do behind so the scenes much. outside of just making the music so and much. releasing i mean my last project the artwork alone <laughs> we know how what we've done with just the artwork over time and we know how far we want to take it in terms of you know, future planning and future projections. So you need to, before you put out any content, just think about. It's because you have vision. Yeah, think about it. Just when you have vision, you can see the future. Yeah, I mean. You can see what you want. <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. And if you know what you want, listen, just have the ingredients to go and do it. You yeah. know, and just when I release my album, um, we have a mutual friend. Before I put it out, I made sure I got Dubai Tourism involved. 
I made sure I got other brands involved who sort of supported in some form. All the artists that we flew in, none of none of which I paid for their flights from my pocket and all of that, you see. And the venue, they offered me the space free of charge with um, um, certain FOCs. Mm. But we had to offer them something and say, these are the people who would be here. These are the people who will be shouting about your space. In addition to that, this is the value of what we would bring you, right? And people would want to mess with you because of that. And yeah. they know you, you're showing them numbers. They can see you're not bluffing. Yes. You see what I mean? So um, I could easily, my first album had about 16 tracks. That's to tell you, I can easily be putting out promo videos every day on social media. And that's called Diverse that that's you released diverse. in 2019. Yeah, exactly. So I can easily be putting out con videos and just be singing. And yes, people do that and they still get discovered. And I hope and I, I wish I could, but that's not my strength. I don't have the time mm. because I have to do things that I know I can convert to money almost instantly or in a couple of weeks or, <laughs> you know. So that's how I, you know, how I would how I roll nice you know but and diverse the first afro pop album released in the middle east in the middle east congratulations thank you man it's amazing yeah that's amazing we also picked up black, black excellence awards for that's that that's amazing that's yeah. amazing so it's good so taking it back to financials have you yourself ever dabbled ever dabbled in financial markets like trading or investing have you ever come into my world I have. Oh, <clears throat> tell me more. Mate, I have. I've made some serious mistakes. <laughs> um, lost money, still losing. Um, but, I mean, I think I was just one of those people who got into it at the, at the wrong time. And when I did, I over-gambled. Right. And then I became a victim of most, you know, most people. But I think I just didn't get into it when I was supposed at the right time. Um, and when I say that, without having to put out some, you know, a lot of my secrets, but <laughs> um, the days of the cryptos, we, you know, we made a bit of money and then we got greedy. And of course, <laughs> it's the way all the crypto boys so, can relate. So, you know? so yeah, so I, I have doubled, no regrets. Good, good. Yeah. And that's the way to look at it. But don't worry, we're going to... We're going to get you back on track. All right. Yeah, we're going to get you back on track, so All don't right. worry. <laughs> All right. What I want to do, I'm going to ask you some quick fire questions. Go on, then. Quick fire questions. And then you've got to respond as quick as you can, yeah? Less thinking. Mm -hmm. All right. Singing or rapping? Singing. Performer or producer? Performer. Bump or the man? Hey, that's a hard one. The man, what? the man, really? the man, really, the man. Because as a songwriter, great song, great song, guys. Both of these songs, guys, go on to Spotify, have a listen to these songs. They'll yeah. jump on YouTube. Yeah. yeah, they these these songs are brilliant. Yeah. I was fortunate enough to have a, a preview of Bump before it before it came yeah. out, and so yeah, guys, have a have a listen to this, and it, obviously have a look at. Um, a lot of his songs, you'll be surprised at how yeah. how great they are, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. But Bump, as a party jam, it's the one, isn't it's it? The it's the one. one. When it comes out in clubs, yeah, how can you, you not? Just, how can you? Oh, hey, yeah. How can you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and what I love about it is even before it became slightly popular in Dubai, when when I put it, when I'm in a club and they're playing it, just seeing people's reaction to Numbers it are good on that one. Listen, numbers are good on mate. that one. I'm telling you. Yeah. That yeah. one done well. Yeah, it has that done, done well. well. That one done well. So, yeah, well done. <laughs> Favorite designer brand? Uh, look, I love me Gucci, man. I'm not going to lie. Gucci? Yeah, I love... I, I, do, I do have a few pairs myself, so... <laughs> <laughs> favorite drink? But favorite designer? Go. Kojak. Oh yes, that's my father. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Favorite drink? Um, water. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Spotify or Apple Music? Apple Music. Business or economy? Business. Trading or investing? Investing. Favorite type of woman? Ah, uh, 
You're gonna put me on the spot. So, so to the, to the, to the viewers, are, are we are we are we are we a single man? Are we a taken man? What what are we here? Because my line of questioning yeah, is yeah, about yeah, to get yeah, very, yeah, very yeah, 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 yeah. So I need to tread carefully. I mean, favorite type of woman, I can say it. You know, I mean, um, <sighs> there is an instant attraction when I see a black woman. Okay. Instant attraction, instant. instant. Yeah. Um, but every other woman I've ever dated outside of my race had always been maybe getting to know them and build. There's always like a, there's a, you know, like there's a build up to seeing the, you know, the finished product. The fini- there's a, there, there, <laughs> but, but instant attraction, yeah. But, you know, as a, as a man who is not. Uh, you just never know. You never know when. You never know where you would end up. But you know, but preference. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> would you prefer to be in a relationship or single? In a relationship. Oh, I love that. Married or not married? Not married. Children or no children? No children. I'm a responsible man. So then yeah. I can't. I can't ask the next question. I was gonna ask <laughs> baby girl or baby boy. No, I'm, I was gonna say. Yeah. I was, yeah. You know? yeah. Okay. Here's a good one. Mm-hmm. A 10 out of 10 with no personality or a 5 out of 10 with personality? 5 out of 10 with personality. That's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. That's really interesting. And so, um, great answers. Great, great answers, man. Great answers. And a, a nice little insight into the into the man behind <laughs> what, what you see. Do you have any questions for me? What made you move to Dubai? What made me move to Dubai? So a few reasons. So let's just stick to three reasons. The first one is um, weather. Weather. So um, living in Latvia um, mm. during winter, it can get quite cold. It can get to the minus 10, minus 15 sometimes. And even though I enjoy shoveling, yeah, the snow every morning, a couple of times a day, mm-hmm. I thought to myself, you know, maybe let's not shovel this year, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I have a white dog. Everyone knows Don Pacho, my dog, right? Right. And then when he's a crisp white dog, and when the when, when the snow melts and turns into sludge, yeah, yeah, yeah. he turns from a white dog to a grey dog. Right. And then, so would you like to wash him? You know, mm. <laughs> so you know, and yeah. so, and, and he's just gonna come in your house, and he's gonna he's, he's he's gonna shake, and he's just gonna go everywhere. Yeah. And I said to the missus, you know what? We're out. Yeah. This winter we are out. And you know? how do they feel about the move? Oh, I think that for, for myself and Alina, we, we we were talking about coming to Dubai. Um, over the duration of 2023, mm-hmm. we, we were talking about it, um, especially after the, the summer, I mean, the winter of 2022. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was just something that we, we spoke about mm-hmm. and um, we just, uh, I guess, materialized mm-hmm. and, and made happen. So that was the first reason, the weather. Second one was uh, my daughter's education. She's now going to be two years old um, in a few days. Right. On the 22nd right. of February. Yes. Uh, and so... I want her to have a certain level of education, right? Right, And I believe that um, I won't get that in certain countries. I, I don't believe I'm going to get that in Latvia either. Right. And so that was one of the decisions as okay. well. Uh, it, remember that, that's still not concrete. We're still not so sure, right? Um, and then the third reason was to um, expand the, the business, the trading business. For some reason, um, in 2023, especially early on, I was getting a lot of website hits from the UAE. Yeah. And I reached out to a lot of a lot of my friends out here. And I'm saying, guys, is there is there a lot of a demand yeah. for like traders and stuff like this in the UAE? And I said, absolutely. There but, is a high demand, but, but you've got to watch, for the, for the, for the, watch out for the uh-huh. scammers. Yeah, so yeah, they yeah. said there's a demand for legitimate ones. Yeah, yeah, and because yeah, yeah. you're a trading firm, people yeah, are actually yeah. searching for you. And yeah, so they said, why don't you come out here to to, to grow the business? So that was one of the, the, the reasons as to why we come out here. Uh, but very eye-opening ever since I've been out here because it's not what I expected yeah, it's not what I expected. What I did expect was, um, right, the demand is here. I'm here. You've got the real deal here. So let's go. Oh, no. Yeah. It's easy for people to give you reasons to get out here. Mm. But when you're here, it's not as easy to get the support you need to sort of stay. Definitely. To, you know, to, to stay stable. Yes. You know? Because no one knows yeah, me no, here. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. I, I've got to start. Yeah. Right? I've got to start. Yeah. But then when you're here... Everyone's busy, yes, and everyone is trying to do their own hustle. 
because everyone's it's looking not out home for themselves. From, it's not home for most of us. Do you know what I mean? So you got is, is Dubai a vessel for people to grow their brand or business? Um, it's a bit of both. So it's easier for you if you already have a successful business that you're bringing into Dubai because what that means then is people are already aware Where? of you or aware of your business. Do you see what I mean? So when you now have to build it up from scratch, you need to sort of have a major, like a huge foundation for you to, you know, to, to, build, build, to, to build from. So what would be your advice to me? I think you got it right because you came a few times. Yeah, obviously got um, the attraction of the glitz and the glamour. So which means in your first couple... Guilty. Exactly. Guilty. <laughs> which means in your first couple of weeks, you were able to distinguish between being a bullshitter and, you know... Someone who's real. And someone that is real. Because you got, you know, you got to experience, you know, both, both, both of it. So you're good, man. Thank you, man. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. My final question. Go on. Oh, you got another one. What does family mean to you? Family is, is everything. My guy. It's everything, brother. <laughs> it's everything. Yeah, um, my morals, everything stems from family. And then so um, it's at the forefront of everything I do. Mm. The decisions I make, uh, the life I try to pursue and the life I live. Um, everything I do is, is, is based and solely for the happiness and peace mm. of my family. Mm. And so, yes, I love family's that. everything. All right, guys. Uh, well, um, thank you. Thank you very much for Thank coming for on here. It's been a great conversation. Probably, I'm not even saying this to, you know, um, to gaslight you like you, you lot say, but um, it's probably one of the best podcasts I've Thank been you. on. Thank you. Thank you so much. Because, you know, you ask like real questions. It's not like, you know, like generic. it's like generic. Yeah. You, you know, you're trying to get into the head of the person and just know who the person really is yes. outside of, Outside the of uh, the facade of what people yeah. see you Outside as, exactly, facade. yeah, exactly. No, I appreciate that. Thank you so yeah, much, man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. That means that, that that means everything, yeah. and that's what we want to try to do, right? We want to try to bring people on here to have valid, stimulating conversations with interesting people to get mm -hmm. deep into the person, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So um, as we wrap up, I just want to touch on what I've learnt from this podcast. So thank you so much for the for the kind words and for having your presence here. And um, I think what's very important from everything that you said is that there is a man behind the brand. That's, that's, listen, I wouldn't have put it any better way. Yeah. There is. Yes. And there's a lot more to an individual um, than what meets the eye. And don't always take things at face value from what you see. Exactly. Right? Mm. So you can't have an opinion on someone from what they just see versus knowing the man behind, behind the brand. It. So when you look at the artwork of my last album, uh, my last single, The Man, you'd see that there there's a mask. And that is what most people see at first instant. Right? Your, the version of yourself that you present is determined by what's presented, bef you know, before you yes. it's similar to what you see on socials what you see is what's pre presented which is which is a version a mask and as you go into different layers of of, of, of somebody you'd see different sides to the man yes. so there's always yeah and so that's that what we've seen today in, and that, that's what we've, we've seen today that yeah. mask has come off and we get to see the the, the, the real mko yeah, yeah, yeah. and the man behind the brand so thank you so much thank for you for having your, me it's been spending a your time. pleasure Thank you. <laughs> and guys, if you like everything that you hear and that you that you see, please do the usual like, comment, subscribe. You know, every YouTuber says that, but you know, guys, there's actually a reason as to why everyone says that. You've you got to understand if you don't engage with any of this content, the content sits there and goes dead. So you guys have watched this. And if you obviously enjoyed the conversation and you found in any sort of respect helpful, then of course you'd like other people to also have this, the same impact that it had on you. And so that's why it needs to be made apparent that you just have to do the usual stuff, like comment, subscribe. The, the stats for subscribe is crazy. Yeah. So it's something like 95% like of viewers are not subscribed to you, yeah. but you watch. 
just click a button, my friend. Yeah, click yeah, a yeah. button. That's all you have to do. You know? And you put in the work, man, to keep putting out these content. And Absolutely. these are helpful, helpful yes. content as well. Like if I wasn't sitting here and I listened to this interview, I would have found it very insightful. Of course. You know, so it's it, it makes sense. Even as, a, as an artist, you'd have people who claim to be genuine fans, but they're not sub- subscribed to your YouTube channel. It, it, the it's, math it's, it's is really not math even it. even your yeah. friends, yeah, 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 your yeah, friends yeah, yeah, yeah. who you, they support you, yeah? yeah, brother. You know how you support? <laughs> them, yeah? Click the subscribe <laughs> button, yeah. leave a comment, hit the like, yeah, and then I'll see you at the next episode. Memoirs of a Trader podcast. Take care.